Welcome to Cardiff News Plus. It's 4.30. I'm Shipra Kapoor. And I'm Tanya Korit. A national flooding conference was held today in Cardiff. Representatives from Welsh Government, Natural Resources Wales, local authorities and several engineering companies was present to address the risk of floods and their precautionary projects involved. I went to find out more. Floods hit Toyn in North Wales in 1990 and caused severe damage. Thousands of homes were evacuated and people were left homeless. 25 years later, the government is much more prepared to take precautionary actions to reduce the risk of floods. I think, um, I think one of the points with flooding is that it might not happen regularly to people, but when it does, it can be quite, um, quite disastrous in its extremes and certainly a lot of damage which, which occurs which is why it's important that we have conferences like the one today where we, we share knowledge and we share expertise on how best to manage, manage floods. At a local level, one of the measures was to cut down the trees in Rothbrook Gardens in order to improve flow in the stream and reduce the flood risk. But these measures can be controversial. NRW, Natural Resources Wales, has put the plan on hold following local protests, but some people feel the authorities are not being of much support to them. They are our local councillors. <laughs> they should listen to what we care about. And it's clear that we've had a, a very lively group of people come together with a similar feeling of, of, of concern and, and, and outrage in a way, you know, because we've met in the Penniland Library and, um, and, and we've had them, Natural Resources Wales, come to those meetings. But... Uh, all we have gained is this time in order to, you know, make alternative investigations. At today's conference, the focus was on the risk of flooding. NRW say engagement with local communities is important. When we are considering managing floods in a, in a location, in whatever it is that we do, we try our very best to engage with communities around what it is that we, we propose to do. Uh, in some communities, I think people are, are already from a point of view where they've seen flooding and they, they know that there's a problem. In other communities, sometimes the flooding might not have happened recently, uh, but nonetheless it could happen because, you know, we all know when it, when it rains, it can be very specific as to where that rainfall actually, actually occurs. It's habitat creation and biodiversity gains. The government Reduce says to it's important that people living in flood zones are aware of the threat of to their communities and homes. When necessary. You know, we all feel very uh, an emotional connection to our local parks or neighbourhoods and I think if people see like you know, trees being cut down it's why are they being cut down when we know that actually trees can be used as part of flood defences and then that comes back to actually now and I know um, NLW have been working very closely with the community groups about where, where they go from now on that and that's now um, so that's for NLW to, to deal with that. But I think it shows actually how the need to make sure that we work collaboratively with community. The hope is that Wales would be much more prepared for the floods in the future with efforts of conferences like these. From April 6, an additional 10 pence has been added to the cost of every drink containing sugar. This has been introduced to help with the problem of obesity in the United Kingdom. Yao Yao explored the issue. A combination of a bad diet, often including fried and processed food with too much sugar, has led to an increase in both adult and childhood obesity. A government initiative to help reduce the problem by taxing sugar in drinks is hoped to improve people's health. It should be increased. There's a lot of fat kids, um, no exercising. Um, I think if they, got, if they increase the sugar tax, a lot of fat kids will become thin kids and the healthier kids. I don't agree with the sugar tax, but I'm willing to pay because I, I like sugar. I'm not going to buy diet stuff just because they've added money on. So. Um, I think that it's good that they put sugar tax because it would reduce the cholesterol levels and fat and would reduce the um, ob obesity in UK. So. It's really good, yeah. Really good policy for British people. Uh, firstly, it is good for people's health because sugar uh, is, is an important thing for people's fat, getting more and more fat. Doctors' surgeries are often busy with people suffering from problems with their weight, but obesity can lead to other health issues.
you can get more risk for fractures. Uh, uh, in the spine, I think that may be sorical lumbar fractures. And also, I think it can take you, you make uh, very tired than other people's. If you do a little exercise or some little work, you may feel tired if you eat so, man, so much sugar. It's hoped that these measures will lead to a healthier lifestyle for people young and old. A newly released report from the World Health Organization lists cities affected by air po pollution worldwide. It's also an issue in Cardiff. Causal reports. Traffic, construction, smoke. Many factors may contribute to air pollution in a city. Even in the areas with relatively low levels of air pollution, there might be a negative effect on public health. Air pollution threatens our life. According to the new release the WHO reports, 9 out of 10 people are suffering from air pollution. In UK, 49 cities are at or above the limits of air pollution. Cardiff is one of them. Cardiff is right at the limit of air pollution guidelines of World Health Organization, which is 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Dr. Tim Jones is an expert on environment and air pollution. He even has an air quality monitor in his office. The center of Cardiff is polluted. There's no question of that, and it's due to traffic. Every day, traffic in Cardiff is busy and heavy. Organizations like Friends of Earth are campaigning for a clean air plan to protect people from exposure to pollution from all vehicles in polluted areas. Certainly, it will, it will do two things. It will make people's uh, respiratory health worse. So people who have breathing problems are going to have worse breathing problems. We know that and people who are vulnerable will have their lives shortened. So we would expect people with lung conditions or older people will have their lives shortened. People in Cardiff have various opinions on the air quality in the city. What people are saying is why can't people put all to get together and get into one car instead of people getting into having one person in one car and then Somebody else have one person in another car. If they're working all together, why can't they get together? And that'll save a lot of pollution in Cardiff. You know, there are lots of actions people can take to, to, to improve uh, climate conditions and air pollution, you know, cycling and walking and using more sustainable forms of transport, car sharing, public transport. So there are things people can do to, to deal with the problem. The situation is also on the agenda of Welsh Assembly. We've known for a long time that the air quality in Cardiff is not really as good as we would like and other cities in uh, Wales also, Swansea and Newport. So we need to improve our air quality. Well, I think we need to uh, improve our facilities for people who walk around town and also people who take public transport and also those that do use their car, we should encourage them not to go right to the centre but perhaps just to the edge and then take a, a bus in so park and ride schemes are very uh, uh, useful in that respect. But we need to reshape our cities. Cardiff Council also has plans to reduce traffic and encourage walking and cycling to improve air quality in the city. A fundraising event has been held in Cardiff to help a mountain rescue team buy new equipment after they lost everything in a fire last year. A leading mountaineer was the guest speaker at the event. Disaster hit in November when the team's base was destroyed by fire. They lost at least £250,000 worth of vehicles and emergency rescue and other medical equipment but have continued to rescue people in trouble in the mountains. Alan Ward is an international mountain leader. He's provided support to the charity team on previous occasions and offered to talk about his international trekking experience at the event. I'm an international mountain leader, so I guide uh, in the mountains all around the world. Uh, my trekking experience is in Nepal, probably 15 trips. Ladakh, uh, with the second part of the presentation, five or six trips. Uh, I'm due to lead a trip to Everest Base Camp in November this year for Wales Air Ambulance to hopefully raise some money for them. Kate Gilliver is a training officer for the Central Beacons team. She says the fire was a huge blow. 
So the event today was the talk by Alan Ward about trekking in the Himalayas. And Alan uh, arranged to do the talk with us to raise funds for Central Beacons Mountain Rescue Team. The team's headquarters in Merthyr Tydfil was uh, very seriously damaged by fire at the end of last year. Uh, we lost all our vehicles and all our equipment for saving lives in the hills. Um, so since then, we've been having a massive fundraising drive to um, help to rebuild the place. Um, and Alan's been absolutely fantastic in helping us with that and putting on this event this evening. The volunteers from the Mountain Rescue Team were at the event, along with the supporters who appreciated their efforts. My favourite was a trek up Stock Cangri last year, um, completing some unfinished business dating back to the 1990s. The event raised a £1,000, which will help secure the team's future. That's all for now. You can follow us on Twitter. We're Cardiff News Plus. From all of us at Cardiff News Plus, goodbye.